Welcome back. Mr. Fala, now let me quote you something that I understand you said. In talking about Nigeria, you said it is a neo-colonial state that is on the verge of total collapse. The ruling class is just pretending to run a modern state. It is a banana republic. Do you really believe that about this country? Yes, very seriously. I, I, I've just told you about the legal system. When you shout yourself who oh, are every day, asking for foreign investment, nobody is going to invest in a country if you do not fix the legal system. If the rule of law is in flight, you, nobody is going to come. Because to invest in a country, you want to be sure. Now, if you lose your money, you can go to court and get justice. That is why we need to fix the legal system, to have law and order. You need to have a level playing ground for everybody who is taken to court. So if you have a system that allows a tiny microscopic minority of the elite to load it over the rest of us, you can't talk of a modern state. Now, and that is what is while, going on. While, while nobody would dispute the fact that Nigeria has problems, there are many things that are right about this country, and yet you seem ready to dismiss those things by calling Nigeria a banana republic. Yes, because, because whichever way you look at it, we can, we can celebrate the fact that we're the largest that we now have the largest exactly. economy yes. in Africa. At the same time, we also have the largest number of poor people in Africa, mind you. We also have the largest number of unemployed people in Africa, which itself drives people to criminality, which itself threatens the peace of the society. So the ruling class has to sit down and ensure that we transform Nigeria from a rentier state to a productive state. You can have the largest economy if you are not productive. If all the major industries are shut down, what is the basis of your pride? Now, let's uh, go back to a few years. You stood for elections in Ekiti State. Yes. You lost against Ayofayose. No. That's no. Uh, I lost. I think that was the time that uh, the Southwest was captured. You lost the elections. Yeah, I lost the election. I mean, there's no doubt about yes, it. Oh, you, I, you I was said to have lost the election. You, you lost the elections. Yes, yes. You lost the elections. Yeah. Now, in recent times, you've described this same person who, who, who won those elections as someone who should be, you know, before a court being tried for murder. He has come out to accuse you of double standards. In fairness to Mr. Yofayoshi, yes. he could never have said that because he knows, he knows His that I would never of cover up. publicity and research, Mr. Ido and the yes. said of you, Mr. Falono is a hypocrite who is fond of criticizing, criticizing misdeeds of those who he perceived to be his political opponents or political opponents of his friends and masters, but who always keep silent when such things are done within his vineyard or that of his friends and masters. That was someone there is, there, releasing a statement on behalf of Fayose. Well, well, if you want to say that that is Fayose's position, so be it. When it comes to human rights, in Nigeria or elsewhere, I do not engage in any cover-up. And when it comes to the right to life, which is so fundamental, because you need to be alive to enjoy other rights, there is no killing that has taken place in Ekiti State. From 2003 when Fawashe became the governor and now that I have never taken a position and it has been consistent. In this case, why I'm saying that he has to be in court, in any case, there is a murder charge hanging on his head in Ekiti State. Which apparently for which he's been vindicated no, and no, 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 discharged. No, 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 no. That, that is, no, that no, is no. what he... Again, that is the point I made about the ruling class, manipulating the legal system. As soon as... It is what we have now, so we have to no, respect no. As it. Soon as, as, soon as, as soon as a court order was issued for his arrest, 
he ran to the court of appeal that he should not be arrested. That was the charge. He lost the appeal. And now he's in the Supreme Court. He hasn't had a, a day in court, but I'm sure that will be very soon. And, and it's not in respect of only the case of Tunde Omojola. We have the case of Dr. Ayodara Mola. You have the case of, and there are other cases. And that is why I said, he knows, while I maintain my position, that he must stand trial for murder and cases of attempted murder. And I won't say that of anybody without evidence. He knows I have the evidence. He has the evidence. The police has the evidence. A man hasn't been tried and convicted, but you are implying and calling him more or less a murderer. I say he has to. No, I didn't say murder. I say he has to stand trial for murder. That does not mean that I've concluded that he's a murderer. But you say you have the, the evidence. evidence. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Police report. Reports of state security service. In fact, the state security service, at the instance of President Obasanjo, investigated this guy and produced a 33-page report which I can make available to you. Now, let's talk about... I'm not being flippant. I, let, let's talk about another famous case that you were involved in, the allegation of certificate forgery that was, uh, you know, made against the former governor of uh, Lagos State, your good friend, Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tunubu. You had no problem um, defending him, I think, and taking that case. And many people felt, given your pedigree, you really had no business taking on that case. And some of those criticisms included the late, you know, of Ganifa Wemi, the legal luminary, someone that I believe you respect, and I think someone who mentored you. In hindsight now, do you think you should have taken that case? I did not take up that case. It was a case between which Chief Ganifa Wemi instituted against the police. I did not appear in the case. Why were what you seen did, to be supporting Fazia? What I did, what I did was I, I expressed an opinion, which was that since Senator Bola Tinubu was a governor, that he could not be prosecuted as governor, and that that case would have to wait until after his tenure, if you had the case against him. I did not go to court to appear. I didn't appear in the case. You didn't see that making that comment could be misinterpreted given the relationship you're known to have with the man? No. Uh, the chief By Garifai your own me, admission, chief you Garifai were had a, had, had, had the discussion before I expressed my opinion. He also took me up for my opinion. So that was what happened. Now, many see you as his successor. How do you see yourself? Chief Gaoni Farami remains a mentor. I learned a lot from him in terms of uh, public interest litigation. Uh, because he was actually very prodigious in terms of taking on cases of public interest. Uh, and we're trying to do that. Uh, he also was very committed to social justice. Interestingly, the greatest happiness of Chief Ganifa and me before he passed on. And I remember our last meeting. Of course, he knew he was going to die. And he said, Femi, I'm happy that quite a number of you have taken on this battle. And he was talking of public interest litigation. And today, from all over the country, there are lawyers now who are asking more questions beyond the confines of their chambers. And that was, that was very, I mean, I mean for, for Chief Ganifa, that was a lot of achievement. I mean, if you take the area of local standard, his last case, Fawemi and the president, has to do with two ministers who were taking dollarized salaries were being paid in dollars, while others were being paid in Naira. Of course, they went to court. And the high court said, what is your business? You're not a minister. No, no, the other ministers are not complaining. Say, no, I'm a taxpayer. Of course, the court dismissed his case. But he went to the court of appeal and won. That if the lives of Ganifa Wemi did not ask questions, who was going to do so? And that case now 
is so useful in promoting public interest litigation. So to that extent, we are indebted to him. Sir, thank you so much for being a guest on Straight Talk. Thank you very you much. You have been watching me, Kadria Ahmed, and my guest was Mr. Femi Falano, with whom I was discussing insecurity in the country, the state of the judiciary, the national conference, and of course, bits about Nigerian politics. Join me again next week when I'll be in conversation with another special guest. Have a very good day.